Hello and welcome to this webinar, which is on remotely debug, monitor, and update Nordic Power IoT devices with Memfold. We're very excited today to have with us our partner, Memfold, to tell us about their powerful platform and to show us a live demo on how easy it is to use with our NRF Connect SDK and cellular IoT devices. So, my name is Ali Aljani, and I uh, work with Nordic Semiconductor as a product marketing engineer. And from Memfold, we have with us today uh, Heiko, Heiko uh, Behrens. He is the head of products. And um, Heiko, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Of course. Um, thanks, Ali, and hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. My name is Heiko Behrens. I'm head of product at Memfold, and I think my background is very likely similar to yours. Um, I worked as an embedded engineer. I worked as an engineering manager at hardware companies such as Oculus or Intel, Pebble, Pebble smartwatches, you know. Um, but for me, there was also a time before embedded software. And when I first entered the IoT devices industry, I was astonished by how many modern software engineering tools were just not there. So now at Memfold, um, I help closing that gap um, to um, allow the development of hardware products to be, you know, more like developing software products. Thank you, Heiko, for introducing yourself. Um, just um, some practicalities before we get started. The duration of this webinar ex is expected to be around an hour. Questions, of course, are highly encouraged, and you can ask your question by typing them in the uh, box, the ask a question box, which is located in the top of the right side bar. Uh, all the questions are anonymous and please try to keep them as relevant as possible to the topic. We will answer these questions towards the end of the webinar. Uh, the chat in the bottom of the right side bar, that's not anonymous and please do not use it for questions. If you have more questions, of course, you can use Nordic Dev Zones. We have a team of tech support uh, eager to help you with any question you have. And for uh, questions related to the Memfold platform, please uh, visit memfold.com slash contact. And note that the, a recording of this webinar will be available together with the presentation at webinars.nordicsemi.com. Uh, with this, um, Heiko, can you share your screen, please? All right. I think I am. Yes, you are. All right. Um, yeah, I'm glad to see that I'm the first people uh, trickling in. Um, I'm excited to hear um, about your questions and I'm happy to answer them at the end of this presentation. But first of all, let me um, start with an outline. The plan for today is going to be about, surprise, surprise, Memfold. Um, so I will talk a little bit um, what Memfold um, is and how it can help you to um, pr produce better um, firmware software for your embedded products. Um, and how easy it is um, to integrate Memfold and what that actually means in the context of the NRF um, Connect SDK. The middle part is a live demo. Um, wish me luck um, that the demo gods don't sprinkle too many typos and cosmic rays at me when I'm trying to um, connect this thing to um, uh, by the LTE network and you know I'm reflashing the device on board. It includes cloud, it includes tears and sweat. Um, so I hope that goes well. And then in the end, um, we, we picked one aspect um, we wanted to talk about um, a little bit more in depth. If I was um, an attendee, I would love to know more about uh, the, the story behind it, like the nitty gritty details, so to speak. And um, yeah, we picked one item that was part of the demo before and, and walk a little bit um, through the internals there. Uh, okay, and then we conclude obviously with questions. So then, what is um, Memfold? We sometimes struggle to explain what it is um, because it has so many different facets. Um, but one simple um, way uh, to take uh, to explain it is to say that Memfold is uh, one the first observability platform for connected products. And I know that observability um, is, is um, basically the, the important word here, and it could mean so many things. For me, it is really just a fancy word for um, having the ability to understand how products behave um, once they are being used in the field. 
So yes, you can develop and iterate and test um, as long as you have it on your desk, but what's happening once it's actually in production, once you shipped your connected embedded product. So this is not um, new by any uh, means. This is very um, popular in the, in the world of software development. Um, there are many tools around it. If you do mobile development on a smartphone or server development, we have these always connected servers anyway. And even desktop apps and, and operating systems these days talk back home with user consent um, to help the vendor to improve the quality of the product. But in the hardware world, this is more difficult. You have very constrained devices. You are measuring available code space in kilobytes, sometimes um, even less. Um, I used to work on a product where you would be the hero of the week if you could shave off 100 bytes of code space. And then these devices are not always connected to broadband or uh, like uh, fiber internet. This is like sometimes really just um, Bluetooth or something even slower, like a, a low bandwidth, low power, wide area network. And then battery um, life, you, you just simply cannot afford um, to be always connected for many of these um, products. So basically what we try to do here is to um, exchange the Whenever a bug occurs, we don't want you to first reproduce it at the desk or ask the user to send it back um, to the lab or um, to describe it in detail or, or even worse, um, look at Reddit or Amazon reviews, how your product performs. What we actually want is um, to look at not only this one offending device, but the entire fleet of your, um, of your um, products to see if something um, odd occurs. And maybe it's not even user facing yet. Maybe you have um, a symptom that will eventually lead to a problem and observability helps you to detect this. So that could become um, um, battery degradation across the fleet. You know, um, maybe you're losing a few hours um, per release because you're using more CPU time, or it could be something that um, a, 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 an increase in crash frequency whenever um, you are connected to a certain network. Um, stuff like that we would like to make visible. But first, let's compare that to the traditional um, hardware development process I was exposed to, and I bet many of you are. Um, so that process where you come up with a design for a new product, oftentimes years ahead um, before you ship it, you, you oftentimes have industrial design involved and um, you have material design even for some of these um, products. And then you come up with an electrical design leading to an EVT, an electrical, verifi well, electrical verification test. Um, you have like all of this um, very, very early. And then once you have boards, you can um, try this out. You do some initial firmware, but they are blocked because not everything is in place yet. You do um, more testing and then you have a design verification test. You have um, PVT in the end, and ultimately mass um, pr production. There's a lot of steps involved, um, really to de-risk at every single step um, the investment because it takes so long, and then you ship it and you're done, right? Um, but you know, let me tell you, this is not how it works. After you ship, you will encounter um, problems, and um, the the channels without observability are very poor and very um, uh, limited when it comes to diagnostics. So I, I really um, saw even like product setups where or company setups where companies split the team um, between those folks who brought up and shipped the products and those that were responsible for maintenance. Um, and that um, only relying on customer RMAs sending back their devices and which was going very poorly. Um, but yeah, this is very waterfall-y, um, takes years and leaves a lot of potential um, on the table. When in reality, um, we would like to um, make this feedback loop tighter. And whenever something occurs, um, you really start over, but not in years, um, but much, much faster. So um, at Memfold, we advocate um, a more iterative process. Some of you may have seen a diagram not unlike this one. If you Google for DevOps, um, a common process or idea in the software world, um, this is what you get. And the reason why this is not a circle, um, but this uh, little slope here is that it should um, depict the idea of infinity, 
the you know the figure eight being the mathematical uh, um, uh, symbol for that. And the idea here is that yes, of course, you have design and implementation and testing and shipping the deployment, but after that, um, you um, have the ability to observe, to see um, beyond customer feedback and customer support calls, but really in depth what's going on. You may even be able to analyze it, and that's what we are going to see today, where you can have like backtraces um, and local variables and call stack and, and like all of this without even having physical access to the device. You create um, a hypothesis how to fix a problem. You know for sure how many people are affected by it. And, and then you start all over. Um, you uh, implement the fix, you test it, and you roll it out. So that is um, a, an infinite um, circle, so to speak, um, to continuously improve the product. But not only that, it also allows you to ship earlier because um, this way you not only um, can fix bugs and improve the quality, you can also extend the feature set of your product. So this totally opens up a path where you ship maybe only with 80% of the ultimate features of your product because you have the confidence and the ability to add features later on. So if I had to um, call out the three pillars of Memfold, um, it would be these. Um, obviously, you need monitoring, what I called observability before. Um, deep insights into um, the behavior of um, not only individual devices, but the entire fleet. And then you can cross-correlate um, how um, a certain, after deploying a certain version of your firmware, the CPU um, utilization went up, which in turn meant that your battery level or the batteries um, uh, deplete more quickly. So all of this um, without even talking to anyone um, and, and seeing this, even if it's not very obvious, but maybe only by um, 5%. The other one is remote debugging. Um, and that has many facets. Um, you say you have a crash, the device reboots. Sometimes users don't even see it. Embedded devices are traditionally very quickly at rebooting. Um, but something has happened, and maybe it is uh, data losses involved, um, certainly degradation and uh, the, the services you provide. So um, how can you know about it, A, that it happened, and then B, what exactly happened? If the user cannot even see it, they will have a hard time describing or reproducing it, and so will you at the desk. So um, we want the ability to basically capture everything that you would normally capture with um, a debugger attached to your dev board, but in the field without even anybody being involved. So that's what we understand by remotely debugging. And then we have plenty of other tools that make sense once you have that. If a bug exists in your um, software, it may exist or occur to thousands of users and you don't want to dig through all of those um, backtraces and core dumps, you actually want to deduplicate them. And there are tools that are necessary once you think about this at scale, and all of this is what Memfault offers. And then, of course, once you have identified the bug, um, you want to fix it. And that involves um, writing new software, but ultimately deploying it, uh, loading it onto the devices that um, were showing the offending behavior. You don't want to roll it out to your hundreds of thousands or millions of devices. You actually um, want to um, de-risk this. Let's face it, whenever you make a change to software, there is a chance that you introduce even more bugs. So when we say we surgically um, want to deploy OTA, we mean that you want to only um, load new software to those devices that are um, most affected um, by, by the bug. And then you can use going all the way back to observability, you can use um, the tooling to see if it is a marginal improvement. If it is actually measurable, then you can um, take on more risk and roll it out maybe to 10, 20% of your entire fleet before you roll it out to all of your customers. So all of this is um, what Memfold offers. And we are a fairly young company. We are only um, at the market for about three years, but we can already say with confidence with the data we um, collected on behalf of our customers that there are some amazing measurable results. So for example, there's um, one company we pulled this number off of. Um, they are in the consumer space. It's a sports uh, gadget, smart sports gadget. And when they initially integrated Memfold, they were shocked. And I'm sure most engineers 
um, will be shocked when they first get the hard numbers of their software quality, because oftentimes we engineers are fairly self-confident, believing that this is only like 10 lines of codes. Our firmware is really limited. There cannot be many bugs. But then again, um, this particular customer, and this is not an exception, they had devices that were crashing four and a half time uh, per month. So each device basically um, crashing once per week. That's on average. I've seen customers um, where a device was crashing 10 times or even 100 times per day. And so we were basically um, applying the methodologies I was talking about before. And within the time span of uh, half a year, roughly, we got this down to half a crash per month. And this is where we get these 90% uh, from. And you know, thanks to Menfold, within just a week, we could um, determine that all the bugs um, could be um, narrowed down to basically two core issues. Um, these devices um, that were contributing to the bugs um, very um, openly um, exposed like two um, major problems. We identified that without sending back any devices, um, we could look at the raw data and guess what? It was a silicon bug. So how likely is it that you are an that you have the ability to find a silicon bug um, that is not your software, but um, but triggered only in the field and to have the data to prove it. So we worked um, with the customer and the silicon uh, vendor to fix this. Um, and yeah, now they are back to this um, uh, much, much lower number and they continue to use Memfall. Um, yeah. So as disappointing as it initially is when you look at um, the crash um, reports for your own um, firmware, um, I strongly believe that um, with a objective and incremental path towards better quality through Memfold, you have the best tool available to, to improve the situation. And this is not uh, Memfold alone, and also not um, the, the, the purpose of this um, webinar to only talk about Memfold. Um, when you, t when you look at the different um, devices and, and uh, possible applications of Memfold, I believe that um, the partnership with Nordic is the best possible combination you can have. In particular, um, with the NRF um, 9160, um, we will demo on later today because this device is not only great, it is also always connected to the internet. So that gives you, without any um, further integration effort, um, a direct path um, to um, observability. And um, since Memfold had been integrated into the NRF Connect SDK since version 1.6, um, it is an integral part of um, the um, SDK. It's as easy as flipping um, really just one config flag. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you, you not only get um, these great features, it's also very, very convenient to add it. And there's one more um, twist to this. Um, this partnership between Nordic and Memfold not only gives you all the convenience, it also gives you um, all of that for free. So um, there's no credit card required. Um, you can really just start, um, you create an account and that's it. Because you're running on a um, Nordic Silicon, um, you can use it. And then that's what we are going to do right now. So uh, yeah, let me actually um, switch over to um, my other desktop here. What you can see here is um, the um, it's the NRF 9160 um, DK. This is live. This is on my hands here. You can um, see it here being connected with a cable at the far bottom. The cable is only there so that we can have a serial connection into it. Everything we see otherwise is um, based on LTE and wireless. I could plug the cable. Maybe I might if the if the demo goes well. Um, but for now, this is really um, just um, a normal MDEF board as you would use it. So um, I have a terminal here. I can use it to um, go directly into the device. And if I am, uh, for example, resetting it by pushing the button, um, you will see um, the logs as they occur um, from the device. How do you get started with, um, how do you get started with Memfold on um, on your NRF device, you ask. And you know, when I am a software um, developer, I usually just Google that. So um, let me pull up a browser, um, my trusty search engine, and then I type NRF Connect SDK Docs, 
the NIF Connect SDK has outstanding documentation. And then in the documentation, um, you search for Memfold. This is the official NIF Connect um, documentation. You search for it. Um, I will remove the distracting highlighting. And then you can read everything about Memfold. It tells you what it is, how to configure it, um, and it tells you um, to, to create an account. So I'm doing that right now. I'm uh, following the link. And then you will see a sign up form. That sign up form is asking for your name. So that is Heiko Behrens. My company is Memfold. And then this is uh, Heiko NIF webinar at memfold.com. And then very secure password. Okay. So I'm signing up. And because you were going um, through this um, integration path, you're going directly from the Nordic um, documentation following that link, we already um, expect you to do this on an um, NRF91. Um, so um, many things are pre-configured for you, and I really just call this project um, webinar. Everything will be set up for you automatically and you go directly into the integrated documentation of our web application. And not only that, because you know about Memfold already, we don't need to tell you what Memfold does and can do. We jump right into um, the thing you want to do with your project. So um, it continues with, here is the thing you need to do with your um, Nordic project. So let me tell you um, uh, uh, more about this um, project I'm currently running on. I'm uh, stopping the uh, serial connection to my board here. I'm currently in the um, Nordic Connect SDK um, version 161. Um, there are samples in it. All of these samples already exist in 160. I really just happen to have a more recent version. So if you look at the NIF samples directory, you see that there are plenty of examples, including one um, that says memfold. And what I'm going to do in this um, webinar is I made a copy of the sample and removed everything that was related to Memfold. And then I will incrementally build it up again to some extent. I will leave out a couple of things um, to make it quicker and simpler. Um, but otherwise, um, that's really it. Um, so um, that's the source code. Um, you have basically one um, main.c file, and I'm um, showing you that right now. Here it is. That's the main.c. And it's really that simple. Um, you have in the beginning, um, you have um, setup of, um, of the modem. And then there are functions to trigger a stack overflow. There's a button handler. And there's the main um, uh, loop. You can build this um, with uh, rest build. Um, I did this already before. And then you can basically, what I'm going to do is rest build and flash in one uh, turn on the right hand side. I'm reopening um, my um, serial connection. And let me do this once more. Um, what you will see is that the LED here blinks, turns off because it resets, and then blinks. And in the logs, you see um, that the device reboots. So, and, and the log statements are, I'm connecting to LTE network. That's happening down here. And then after that happened, um, you will see uh, that it connected or reconnected in case you lost the connection in between, which actually happened here right now. Now let's go back to um, Memfold. It says, copy these lines over um, to your project configuration. So I can do that. Um, here it is. This is really just adjacent um, um, to your um, other files in the, in the sample. Um, but if you have an existing project, that's pretty much exactly that. And what it does is it says, please enable the Memfold. And um, here is a project key in case you need to upload data. But before I build and flash, um, let me walk you once more through the capabilities of this um, sample application. Basically, it has wired up two buttons, um, and I can use them to um, crash. So if I press this, the device crashes. It um, thankfully tells me that this is intended. So it says a stack overflow will occur. And the other crash it can do is it can do like a null pointer on the reference uh, session, referencing a null pointer. But otherwise, we are out of luck. Um, in the field, we wouldn't know anything. The user would say, um, every now and then the device crashes and is unresponsive, but we don't know how. Now, I added these um, two lines to the configuration. I'm now rebuilding and reflashing. Um, 
And what we will see is that the device reboots. Otherwise, it behaves exactly the same way. I didn't change any line of code um, that would alter its behavior. Um, but what it does is that um, Memfold is now tightly integrated into, oops. Am I in the right folder? Yes, I am. So much about, oh, I did not read the documentation well. So it goes further. It says that you need to create a couple of files. Um, we will get to these files later. Um, basically, it says, uh, create me definitions for metrics and um, other details that we currently don't take advantage of, which is the wrong folder here. But we will get to that if time permits. So I'm doing that. And then they say we need two more files. So we're doing this. If you just try out the sample, um, it will work out of the box. I'm running through these additional steps so that you can see how little there is necessary in order um, to enable an existing project to take advantage of Mempod. So we are doing this right here. Now the build should complete. And the key you see um, in the configuration tells the device um, about the project we just created. It's not unique to this particular device, but all of your um, devices in the fleet, they now know um, which Memfold project to upload data to. So once the build completed, you will see that it um, flashes the device. So I'm expecting um, the logs here um, to indicate that the device reboots. We see that right now. And you can already see that Memfold um, is uh, printing a reboot reason, for example, here. Um, it was a pin reset. And now um, it actually connects um, to, to the um, um, uh, internet again. Now, what Memfold automatically does is now it would submit every hour um, some new um, data points. Of course, we don't have that time here in this project. So I make one additional um, change that is really unique to this um, webinar scenario. I'm saying, um, please um, upload every 10 seconds. Um, and we do that simply so that um, we will see data trickling in more quickly in the backend um, instead of waiting for an hour um, without anything happening. But otherwise, in production, um, it's safe to stick with the defaults, which would mean every hour um, data will be uploaded. It's stored safely on the device. You don't lose any data. Um, but it is, is a good trade off between um, visibility um, and timely feedback versus battery drainage and bandwidth um, utilization. OK, then. So we see that, again, a memfold. You see that in the um, log indications here. Memfold detected um, the reset. Let me increase the font size a little bit. And now what you also see is that now Memfold is sending data. So it does that every 10 seconds if there's data available. And what does that mean? If I go back to the web application where I could continue with the tutorial, when I'm now going back to the fleet to show me all the devices, voila. My fleet now consists of one device, and that is the device um, you see on the right-hand side. So we know that this device has a certain serial number. We know that this is a um, NIF9160DK. We saw it a few seconds ago, and we know the software version it ran on. Now, let it crash. Um, I'm now using my finger here to press the button again. If you look at the logs, we see alarming red log output um, talking about a stack overflow. The device reboots. And so far, nothing else happened, right? Except that Memfold struggles to connect because LTE is um, not a reliable thing right after boot. So um, I think every 10 seconds, it will try again to upload data. And here we are. Um, what happens now is that Memfold collected what we call a core dump, all the details necessary to debug this issue. Um, and we will see this um, in Memfold's issue tab. So it says that. Wait a second, I cannot show you anything because I'm missing symbol files. What's that? In order to give you all the details you will see in a minute, Memfold needs access to um, the symbol file, the ELF file. Don't get me wrong, this is not source code. 
this is really um, just um, the um, build output um, with file locations. Um, the symbols, basically anything you would um, need to debug um, an application, but not the source code. Um, so I'm uploading this um, to our backend. This is um, from the build folder of your local build. If you would do this um, in a real setup, you would probably create build scripts that upload this after each build automatically. And now as I'm refreshing the page, Memfold has enough data um, to process all bug reports that had not been processed. And here we are. This is our crash. Let me click on it. Boom. So what do we have here? Um, we actually have a crash um, here. So like you have basically a hard fault, and then um, you can dig around with um, local variables in all the different tasks and stacks that were like a task that were running, registers, but also um, if not optimized out local variables. And apparently, we had a crash in line 96 with a local variable n being almost 10,000. Let's go back to um, the source code um, 96. Sure enough, here's our um, recursion that was triggering a um, stack overflow. We didn't re quite reach 10,000, but we ended at um, 98, um, 79. So you have all of this as if you were attached to a local debugger, but this happened theoretically in the field. Um, you also have um, global variables um, because we um, submit a, a dump of your um, RAM. You can control which regions um, to send, and then you can dig in, for example, oh, um, how does, I don't know what is interesting here, um, the UR configuration, for example, oh, it's um, the boat rate is uh, uh, 100K. So you have all of this at um, your fingertips now with a bug that happened in the field. And I can press the button once more um, and I can also, um, right after that, um, create another crash. And what you will see is that all these crashes um, will be collected um, once uploaded to Mempold again over here, and we deduplicate them. So twice we had this crash on only one device and then another time. And you can imagine how this um, would scale towards larger fleets and more bugs. Okay, um, how are we doing on time? I need to rush over this a little bit. The next thing I want to show is um, metrics. So you may have seen really pretty charts from your DevOps team and um, server teams that show you response times and um, user behavior. We are not so much into like sniffing on end users. We actually care about the stability of the devices. So battery, um, live, number of reboots, and so forth. And again, you have um, documentation how this is being done. Um, in the interest of time, I'm rushing over that a little bit. And that is, I think, not a problem because it is so um, uh, well uh, uh, documented. I'm also cheating. I will basically now switch to a slightly more aggressive um, uh, way of copy and pasting um, code because we are really short on time. Because uh, we are short on time, I would also like to create uh, metric packages, what we call a heartbeat every 10 seconds and not wait. Usually, I think we capture them once per minute and then upload everything um, by the hour. But I really want this to happen more quickly. I include now that I want to like create my own little metric, um, the, the header. And, and all of this is documented um, in the documentation. And then I'm hooking it up um, to a little switch um, here in, uh, on my dev board. It has not only buttons, but also these switches. And the idea is that whenever you um, toggle the switch, you collect um, some metric that is um, representing something specific to your product. And your product may, in fact, do something else, such as um, triggering a servo or um, doing all sorts of stuff. And, and this is showing how you can incorporate um, your own metrics. But it doesn't stop there. Since um, we have this um, super tight integration um, with um, the NRF uh, Connect SDK, we can do one better. We can actually um, collect metrics about um, LTE connectivity issues, um, stack usage, CPU utilization, all of that on your behalf. This is opt-in, as you can see. You don't have to do this. Um, 
but oftentimes people are interested in these numbers. And for example, one thing would be uh, stack overflow. How much stack do I have available over time? Let's do this. And in fact, the standard set of our metrics does um, do exactly that. It will measure the free bytes on your stack over time so that you can know how close you are to a stack overflow uh, and preventing problems before you even encounter um, a, a um, crash due to that. So I'm reflashing um, the device. It looks exactly the same way. I can continue to crash my device. Um, nothing changed here, but now the device also collects uh, metrics. So if I go back to uh, my all issues tab, you can see that doop, 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 uh, manifold and LTE connection. Let's wait until um, data was uploaded. Okay, that looks good. Refreshing the page. What I'm expecting is that um, we will miss, um, as with last time, we are missing um, symbol files. This is the right project. Oh, this is odd. Maybe um, the crash did not occur in time. I see twice this one here. Let's look at the software distribution of this. So no, this was all on the same software version. Um, which software versions have been reported so far? Two versions. Okay, so maybe um, let's upload um, the ELF files for that. Yeah, so like you have all these insights, like which versions um, have been reported so far on all these devices, if an issue occurred, um, how often did it occur on which version, which devices, you have fleet-wide analysis um, about that too. Um, I, ah, here we are. So like we now have it four times, and if you go at that crash, you should see yes. So it happened on two different versions, but what I actually wanted to show you is uh, metrics. So now you see for example, um, the CPU utilization, or um, you can see um, the free stack of, um, like apparently we have like 1.6K 1, 6, uh, 1. available on stack. I'm now toggling that switch a little bit um, so that we have our custom metrics collected too. You see in the logs um, that we um, detect the toggle. Um, what you don't see is really the payload of each metric, but um, the data will be um, uploaded to Memfold now um, whenever we um, whenever we send new data. So basically, yeah, here you can see this um, chart here. And this is really just like a very, very tiny peek into what's possible with Memfold. Um, you can drill in correlate um, metrics with um, um, reboots and so forth. Whee! That was a lot, but it wasn't too bad, was it? Um, we accomplished a lot with only, let me go back. Um, I think that was um, maybe, let's see. Um, these were the changes. So like one line of code here, um, two lines of code, and then the project config with, um, this is for the uh, demo only, so four additional lines of code. And we have um, all these metrics at our um, disposal. Um, we looked at remote debugging. Um, sorry, I'm rushing a bit here now. Um, but this is, we looked at this um, through the lens of a hard um, fault here, like a stack overflow. Um, the demo also, the sample that we shipped with is um, including a null pointer um, dereference. And, um, but you can do all kinds of things. Um, SDK errors, as I said, silicon bugs, bus faults, um, and so forth. What I didn't show you is that you don't need to crash the device to get all these details. You can actually, at very specific points, collect the same amount of data um, if something specific to your product happens. So if there's this one odd situation you never really could quite analyze in the field, um, it doesn't lead to a crash, but you still want the same insights, um, you just trigger it um, in code. Metrics. Um, there's a set of standard metrics, um, and here you see a slightly more pretty um, chart and to see how this um, goes over time. Once collected, each dot here representing, I think, an hour worth of data. Um, but um, 
I showed to you how you can add your own um, metrics um, that could be, for example, um, connectivity statistics, such as, oh, you also have a Bluetooth connection. How many bytes are you transferring? You just continue to add how many bytes you are currently transferring. And then we aggregate that. And in the heartbeat, we say how many kilobytes of data that was. And we have, as I said, like fleet wide statistics. They really don't make sense um, for this one device that only existed for a few minutes. But over time, when you have um, tens and hundreds of devices during development or hundreds of thousands and millions of devices in the field, they really pay off. And then you see outliers, you drill in and you look at the issues and go deeper. How does that all work? Why, how, oof. <laughs> so when I first saw this, um, we implemented um, similar systems, a subset of that at past companies before. And basically each time I told anyone about what we had, uh, they said, you know, that's, that's not possible. You have a, an embedded device, you have like a few kilobytes of RAM. How can you possibly even do this? It's not connected. Um, I don't believe you basically. Um, well, let me tell you, it does work. Um, and the one thing I wanted to talk about today is um, these core dumps. So um, what usually happens is that um, you have some form of trigger, something that um, causes, in our case, a hard fault. And um, with the uh, Memfault SDK used together with the NF Connect SDK, um, we hook into the um, hard fault handler here and call our implementation that passes on um, the, 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 the reason and the registers. And then from there, we, we collect even more data. All of this is configurable. Um, and um, you, you, that way, you can also add logs um, to it and certain memory regions. And the fact that we captured the memory regions and had the ELF, the symbol file, in our backend allowed us to um, look at all these um, rich details. So all of this bundled together is what we call a core dump. And then we store it away. We usually store it in non-volatile storage, such as Flash. But you can also use RAM. Um, most devices don't erase RAM between uh, reboots, so that's also perfectly fine. The story continues. Um, later on, when you reboot your device and you connect successfully to a network, um, we load the core dump again from um, storage and slice it up into what we call chunks. The size of these chunks are, again, configurable, but by default, they are small enough to um, uh, fit into BLE um, um, package sizes. Um, and then you, in our case, we have the luxury of the NIF 9160. Um, we can directly upload that to the cloud. Um, but if you have any other data um, um, topology, you can use your existing data flow. We also have SDKs um, for iOS and Android um, to, to use the BLE um, path, which is quite prominent. There, the phone acts as a gateway to the cloud. The cloud, that is Memfold again, receives all these chunks puts them in right order and um, uh, re put them, puts them back to a core dump. Then we have um, the symbol file, and then we do the hard part, which is actually analyzing it, symb symbolicating it, deduplicating it, extracting backtraces and variables, and doing further analysis. Like we have a couple of insights that you wouldn't even get from like GDP. Um, we have other um, documentation and even um, online presentations where um, some of our engineers talk about like details, how you can even effectively debug a hard fault. Um, so we do all of that on your behalf and then we present it in the, in the um, web browser. Yeah. Ooh. If you are ex as excited as I am, you sure want to know what to do next and how to proceed from here. Um, these slides will be shared with you afterwards. So you don't need to take a screenshot. You can, of course. But you also saw how easy it is to just Google it and then um, go from there. We have um, the sign-up link, um, which we used, and is linked from um, different places. Memfold has documentation about this. Um, so does the NRF Connect SDK. In this webinar, we used both. Um, really just copied and pasted. Um, if you do this for real, I urge you to read between the code snippets um, to learn more. In this um, webinar, I was really just blindly copying that. The Memfold SDK is on GitHub. Um, the source code can be read by you. I guess all of this is laid out for you. Um, the source code um, is available. And then the NIF SDK, uh, NIF Connect SDK ships with examples. Um, and then, um, yeah, you can, you can uh, learn from that. If there's anything else open or, or unanswered, um, reach out to our support team. That's support at memfold.com. Or if you are more like a chatty person and you want like 
uh, immediate feedback and even uh, talking to other Memfold users or embedded um, uh, engineers in general, I, I encourage you to look at the Interrupt Slack. Interrupt is a community we like to foster at Memfold. It's, it's uh, many experts like you um, doing IoT and embedded development. And they share their experiences, articles, um, links of um, funny and informative uh, items, such as how to use Memfold with the NRF Connect SDK. And with that, I think we are done. One